Let's consider one of the localization cues called IID, or interaural intensity difference. Let me begin by showing a listener in a room. This is a top view of a listener with their nose pointing forward. The listener will be centered at the origin, and I'll call that position L. I'll put one speaker on the right and another speaker on the left, and give these coordinates S1 and S2. Now these speakers are arranged at 45 degree angles with respect to the listener and in my overall coordinate system I'll call that 45 degrees and 135 degrees. The position then of our virtual sound source ought to appear somewhere uh, anywhere between S1 and S2. Say a, a virtual sound source that we perceive at position S. Now we can accomplish this by ultimately being able to specify some arbitrary angle theta between 45 degrees and 135 degrees. I think it's easiest to begin by considering the two extreme cases. Suppose we've set the value of theta to 45 degrees. That, that is, we want all of the sound to appear to be emanating from whatever is at 45 degrees. So we can see that our speaker S2 needs to be at maximum intensity. I'll call that I0. The other speaker then should be contributing no sound at that point, and its intensity would be zero. Take the other extreme, if we go to the far left at theta is 135 degrees, we should perceive all of the sound coming from speaker S1 and none of the sound coming from speaker S2. Now we consider theta as being something that we can continuously adjust between 45 degrees and 135 degrees. And we'd like to have the impression that the virtual sound source always has a given intensity. So we can think of this being stated mathematically as that the intensity produced by speaker 1 plus the intensity produced by speaker 2 must be a constant. And that will be our intensity I0. Again, anywhere in between, we need to perceive that same intensity. So we see that the sum of the intensities is a constant. Now it's important to point out that we're talking intensity here because we are. it turns out that the amplitudes themselves are not constant. So intensity and amplitude are two different factors here. In fact, intensity will be proportional to the square of amplitude. This comes back to the idea of intensity or acoustic intensity actually being a power quantity. Electrical engineers in the audience will recognize that power is proportional to the square of things like voltage and current. So in, a, in the same way, we say intensity is proportional to the square of the amplitude. Now phrased in terms of amplitudes, we would then say that the square of the amplitude associated with speaker 1 plus the square of the amplitude associated with speaker 2 must be a constant. Now, since I had earlier said proportional, I'll just say that these are proportional to our max intensity I0. Now you might recall a useful trig identity at this point, which states sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is 1. Now especially if we remember that sine of theta can be written in terms of cosine of theta if we add a constant offset to the argument, we can really say that the amplitude of either speaker can be written in terms of cosine. So the amplitude associated with our speaker on the left, uh, we can say that's, that's equal to cosine of something. I'll get back to the argument here in a moment. And similarly for the speaker on the right side. 
speaker two. And again, the amplitude can be said to be uh, ultimately proportional to the square of something. Just relating those back. Uh, as I mentioned, then we we can then adjust the argument to make the cosine become a maximum at any desired angle. So when I subtract 135 degrees, cosine becomes a maximum value of 1 when theta is 135 degrees. So here we see that uh, the, the argument evaluates to 0 and cosine of 0 is a 1. Now as uh, we cause theta to decrease towards 45 degrees, which is a, a total difference of 90 degrees. At that point, the cosine becomes zero. Likewise, we want the speaker S2 to be a maximum at 45 degrees. And uh, taking theta 90 degrees towards the left side of our speaker arrangement, which is 135 degrees, then we find that the argument evaluates to zero. So now we have our two amplitude factors for the two individual speakers. Let me return to the original speaker setup. Now imagine that we have a monaural signal that we've uh, perhaps synthesized, and then we want to place in this virtual environment. So I'll call x of t my input signal, some kind of audio signal. And of course, since I have two speakers, I need two amplifier channels. So one of those amplifiers I will call A S1, which is a function of theta. And this amplifier drives the left speaker. Here's our second amplifier channel, A S2, which is again a function of theta. And we connect that up to the speaker on the right. Our primary input parameter then becomes theta. So if we were wanting to place our virtual source at somewhere around, say, 75 or 80 degrees, specify that value of theta, plug in the values for the appropriate amplitudes, and we're set.